Welcome back to another Flushman Dustin podcast. Nick and Tyler here. We have another special guest from Des Moines, Iowa, Ryan Baumgartner. <laughs> uh, like a sports he, announcer. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Uh, bring, it, bring it back here. Um, so we got Ryan here. Going to have him do a quick introduction, and then we'll kind of get into uh, why we brought him on. Yeah, so like you, you mentioned, I'm, from, uh, I'm in Des Moines now. I'm just south, actually, Indianola, but... Uh, from Des Moines, originally from North Dakota. I'm a, uh, a, a transplant down here and I uh, hunt down here. I have a six-year-old boykin named uh, Paco who's running around the office somewhere with me. And then I just got a seven-month-old field Irish setter. Uh, and, and we try to get out as much as we can around here and, and hunt, hunt as many upland uh, days as, as the calendar allows. You know, if any of you follow any of the... Uh upland pages um on facebook ryan's newest dog is uh actually one of donald trump's uh, spe- specimen there his father <laughs> yeah. his shire is so i probably bought one of those guys too if i'd have known that <laughs> his, so his he's sire from donald trump <laughs> uh, his, his sire was named uh comeback trump was was his oh, sire geez. uh and he's actually the the half sibling of another guest that you had tyler sladen uh, he has he has a, the the litter before mine out of the same the same female, so nice. two two Irish setter owners on this podcast already. Heck yeah, yeah they're beautiful dogs. I love the way that they look. So what did what got you between the you have the Irish setter and then you have the spaniel? So what what brought you from the spaniel to the Irish setter? I I, I originally got the the boykin because I, I grew up in North Dakota. I'm originally from uh, Fargo, but we have a family farm out there, and and I'd say South Central uh, North Dakota, and, and we grew up pushing cattails uh, for our pheasants. So I wanted something that got under the cattails and could run those little muskrat trails or those little game trails. Uh, so I was torn between the American Water Spaniel. Ended up with a with a boykin. Uh, and, and that's why I got the boykin. And then when it was, he's getting a little older, he's five now going, or he's six now, uh, on his sixth season. Uh, and I wanted, you know, another dog to kind of, you know, bridge the gap here. Uh, and my wife told me what we were getting. So that's how I got it. Got an Irish. Uh, she, she said, I want a dog that looks nice. Yeah. So he, he looks nice and he, and he hunts even better than he looks. So I can't complain. Nice. Where, so what's the research that you did? Cause I mean, they're, they don't seem super popular um, as what I figured they would be, but I think they are coming back. Uh, what type of research did you do to bring you to that? I mean, there's other beautiful dogs like Goldens. Right. Or, or a Gordon. I mean, I, yeah. I, I wanted a you Gordon know? setter cause I thought those were good looking dogs too. Yeah, but... My sister has a Gordon setter and uh, man, that son of a bitch can run like nobody. He's 11 yeah. and he can outrun any dog I've ever seen. He'll run and run and run, but doesn't listen for shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, for the, for the Irish, I mean, it, it's just, a, again, on a lot of the, the Facebook groups. I mean, that's, what's great about, it. you know, social media is, is one of the great things about it is just connecting with other people. Uh, so I, I manage or I, I'm an admin on uh, wild bird hunters I think there's about 25,000 members on that uh, group now. So just, just seeing posts like that and seeing other people and reaching out and be like, Hey, where'd you get your dog? And then, and then looking at field trial results and all that. And, and, and so are you the guy I, that uh, banned Tyler for posting our podcast on there? No, no, not, uh, no, <laughs> I wouldn't ban no, I wouldn't ban Tyler. No, there was a, uh, it was one. I don't remember what group it was. Was it? I, no, it wasn't that one. Was it? I, no, I don't think so. There was one no, I got no. kicked out of. I don't know. I posted, uh, yeah, I posted our podcast. I was like, oh, uh, I told Nick to go look at it. It wasn't, I don't remember what upland one it was, but I don't, I don't remember either. <laughs> I told Nick to go look at it and it was gone. And I was like, he's like, I don't even see your name in here anymore. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. Got me in from it. Oh, well, whatever. But so did you, <clears throat> where did, where'd you get your dog out of? uh quantana's kennels out in out in kansas kelly aitken was the the breeder so not too far manhattan just outside manhattan okay that's not too far from des moines then 
No, I mean, like, like the, the first thing is, is, you know, if, if you're looking for a dog, you don't put a distance on it. You, you go to wherever right. the best breeder is and it just happened to be, you know, within a day's drive. Heck yeah. That's awesome. So you, you said he's he, right? Seven months old. Yep. The new one is seven months old. Uh, his, his registered name is uh, commander in chief, but we call him Fitz after uh, JFK, which uh, I hope, uh, you know, a president being shot isn't a, isn't, isn't an omen for my dog or a bad name. And, but yeah, uh, we were like Irish setter, uh, the, the Kelly wanted all uh, uh, presidential names because the sire's name was Trump. And, and I think that the, uh, the breeding took place on inauguration day. So that was kind of the theme oh, of nice. the litter. Uh, so we that's, went with, that's with pretty cool. yeah, John, Johnny Fitzgerald is his name. Johnny Fitz or Fitz or <laughs> could have uh, had his, could have had his name is let's go. Brandon. <laughs> that, that, that came, that came <laughs> a lot, too late. A lot late. Yeah. A lot later. <laughs> uh, so did it, t- did it take you much to get used to, or I guess how, how much have you hunted over him? Did it take you much to get used to his type of hunting style over your, your Boykin or, uh, so not really because, uh, the Boykin, I've, I've always been like the, the one guy with a flusher. I mean, you, you guys are probably the same way with, with a lot of the upland people you hunt with. If you hunt with more upland people than, than, uh, than duck hunting people, you're going to hunt with a lot of GSPs and, yeah. and setters and everything. So I've, I've been used to hunting point with pointing dogs. So it, it hasn't been an adjustment. It's just the first year I'm trying to like stagger them. So I don't hunt them together so much, uh, North Dakota trip aside where we just wanted to shoot as many birds as we could. Um, uh, but I, I've kind of separated them. The only thing I, I I've got to learn, uh, with the, with the pointer is to let my birds get a little further out there before I shoot. Uh, cause I'm not used to having the birds like come up right in front of me, uh, as much I'm used to seeing them, you know, 15, 20 yards instead of, you know, 10 yards. Yeah, that's you gotta tell Nick to do that. Nick's known for blowing up some birds. That's uh, I mean, rather ra- rather how blow. That, how about that bird I shot on Saturday? There was no blowing up, and that it was like sixty yard shot. That was, was a good say, one. R- rather blow them up than miss, right, Nick? Yeah, I know. <laughs> same, no, same thing. You, you don't get food on the table either way. Yeah, yeah, but at least you got a bird. You count. Yeah, whatever, whatever. It's all right. I'll take it. <laughs> but uh so with uh with paco yeah, not to not to interrupt you ahead. but tyler and i always get asked the same question why do you guys pick retrievers for upland hunting you know really really the question is that's what we grew up with that's what we like um actually i have another lab coming next year around this time um and we'll have them then i'll have him get trained kind of through the summertime and then he'll be ready for next uh in two years to hunt essentially is the plan you know, it's just something I grew up from. It's tough to kind of go away from what you know, I guess. Right. D- different strokes for different folks, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I share with Tyler all uh, all the office dogs at our office. We got three yeah. Goldens running around here every day. Uh, so I love gold. I mean, it, I, I, I wanted a Golden and the breeder I was looking into, it was just, whew. who are you um, looking into, if you don't mind asking? Uh, I, I, and I think uh, Nick and I talked to, yep. yeah uh the, the the same place Wentz got his dog up oh, there in minnesota yep, yep thunderstruck and yeah uh, i was like man i could get i could i could get three tries with with you know another breed or another dog for one thunderstruck dog yeah they are definitely not the cheapest gold but out there. You, you, you buy once cry once and and you you get what you pay for is usually my motto anyway yep. so they're, they're great dogs up there yeah for sure do you uh with your with your setters are they kind of naturally good retrievers per se or what the, type of retrieving? So that that's one thing that, that Kelly uh, really emphasizes in her dogs is they do have a natural retrieve. I, right. I've talked to a, a lot of, a, well, not a lot, but a handful of people that have dogs from, from her, uh, which could be considered a lot. I mean, I don't know how many people go out when you're looking at a dog, you, you know, you go find, you know, all these other people that have dogs from that breeder and say, Hey, what's, what are these dogs like? Yeah. Uh, but none of them have ever, you know, not said that they have a natural retrieve and they all love water, uh, which is one thing for, I'm, I'm 
you know, I'm, I'm more of a, a, a pot hunter. I call myself, you know, I'm not looking for the style points, the fancy points. Yep. Uh, I'm looking for meat on my table. So I want to hunt, you know, ducks if they come up or, or pheasants and uh, having a dog that swims, especially a setter that swims or e- even more so an Irish setter that swims uh, and, and retrieves. It's, it's just, he's, he's a versatile dog. We'll, we'll see what Navda says about him when I, when I start testing him in that. Yeah. Uh, but, but so far, I mean, like I said, he, he swims and he tries to retrieve some pheasants. He's, he's a smaller little guy. I think he's only about 40 pounds right now, but he tries to bring the birds back, but he's not quite all the way there yet. Can you yeah. like force fetch him or anything like that? We are I, I, them? I, I haven't because, you know, he's like I say, he's only seven months. The season we started hunting him, uh, our first trip to North Dakota was before he turned seven months. Uh, so I, I did a little training with him before I did kind of one of those train the trainer things where I met up with a trainer yep. uh, and we would go through an hour, hour and a half training session, send me home with warm, homework assignments. Uh, but other than that, no, no force fetching yet. It, it, it'll probably be on the schedule. Um, but that, that, that's, a, that's another day. Get through yeah. the season first. Yeah. Get through the season first. Yep. Yeah. Heck he's just getting rid of his baby teeth. Not too long ago. Right. Yeah. Which is awesome. Already got him out in the field and gun trained and all that good stuff. So that's a huge progress there. Yeah. And I think I was, I was trying to add up before I was like, Oh yeah, you know, I'm coming on this podcast. I'm sure we'll talk about fits a little bit. And I was trying to add it up. And I, I think not, not shot directly over him, but I think he's had 46 birds taken in the field already while we've been out. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. But I mean, maybe only a handful of those were directly over his original point. He honored a couple of times or backed uh, that we had birds taken, but yeah, he's, it's getting up there for, I mean, what are we into the Iowa season? Only three weeks, maybe. Three weeks in? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's a good number of birds first season getting out there. Tell us yeah, a little bit about uh, hunting North Dakota. We haven't, uh, we haven't been there. Um, very interested in going at some point, but uh, you know, would you rather take, uh, I'm assuming you'd rather hunt North Dakota than Iowa. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's different, right? I mean, there's, there's like the, the, the lure about Iowa is some of the places you can get into to quail and pheasants and, and Iowa has great numbers. Uh, North Dakota is just where I'm from. I mean, the, the bomb gardeners uh, came over to North Dakota in like 18, 1885. I think North Dakota became a state in 1886. I mean, so we've, we've been there, whatever it was a year before, and we've been farming the same, valley the same two counties the whole time uh so it's it's land we know it's land i've hunted my whole life so i can go there and and uh we had uh chris there you know one of your other former podcast uh guests chris midget or midget uh and he was down there and he was amazed like we could tell him like hey we've walked you know a quarter mile in the next 50 yards if a if if a flush is happening it's going to happen in the next 50 yards uh, and, and we could have it timed down to that. So it, it's a little different. I mean, it's hard for me to say like, Hey, if I was freelancing, what's the difference between North Dakota and Iowa? Uh, I'd say North Dakota has a lot more cat- cattails, a lot more potholes. It'd be hunting like Northwest Iowa, uh, versus some, some of the areas, you know, cause I, I was pretty vast between, I mean, you hunt yeah. Northern Iowa compared to Southern Iowa, the same with you know, North Dakota, East Eastern West. North Dakota yeah. versus Western North Dakota. Uh, it, it, it's different. I mean, it's, it's, it's fun no matter which one you go to, but it, it's, it's a little different. It is in youth. So Tyler and I, I mean, this year, I think the Iowa birds are numbers are really strong actually. Yeah, I, I would, I, 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 I would agree. I think I've, I, well, I don't want to say how many times I've been out. Cause I don't know if my wife is going to listen, <laughs> uh, but I, I've been out a considerable amount, and I, I think they're better than, than last year. I do too. And I, I'm, most, I'm mostly hunting public. Uh, I've only hunted a private spot, your private spots, maybe three days out of the, the two handfuls I've been out. Uh, and, and I've seen great numbers. Yeah. Although yeah. we've hunted only two public spots, right? Two. And we, on both of those, uh, incredible numbers. Yeah. Yeah, I went out yesterday to public piece and got a double in like the first 35 minutes. 
And then after that, it was just hens that yeah. came up. But I mean, still a significant number of hens out there, which is great coming into the winter, you know, as long as in the cover, you know, if you've listened to previous podcasts, the cover, I feel this year's way better than it has been in the, the past years too. And yeah, my um, quads tell me that. <laughs> yeah, <Hip> flexors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh shit. By the end of it. Oh God. <clears throat> That's true. So speaking of public ground, uh, so your dog Paco, right? Right. Uh, so your goal with him is to get a bird in all 99 counties over him. Yes. Yeah. Right. So when I first got, you know, Paco, I had all these grand ambitions, you know, I'm going to do the, the upland slam or I'm going to go hunt, you know, I'm going to shoot grouse, all the grouse over him. I'm going to quail hunt with them. And, uh, when I got him, I was still in law school. Uh, and then I, then I realized, man, hunting, hunting isn't cheap. Like, you know, it, all these ideas are great, but to do all these things and, and to get them done timely, I was like, this is never going to happen. Uh, so I was like, what, what's a goal I can do in, in Iowa uh, with Paco. That's a little more realistic. And that's where I was like, well, I'll hunt all. I, th- I think it was about four years ago. Uh, this will be the fourth year of doing it. And I was like, Let, let's see if I can do an upland bird in all 99 counties with Paco. Uh, so we started that. And what are you up to now? We're up to 44 counties. That's so we dope. haven't got, haven't got any new counties this year. Uh, he's been he, after the North Dakota trip, he got a little, little sore that hasn't healed after a couple of weeks. So he's been on the IR uh, for a while. Uh, so we're, we're kind of hovering around 44. I'm, I'm hoping uh, not this weekend, but next week. And I'm, I got a family member out that's going to spend some time out in Davenport for a job. And I'm going to try to go, go ahead to the Eastern side and, and try to hunt with him. Uh, maybe knock off a County or two. Yeah. Do you have uh, by chance have Lynn and Johnson County done? I do not. What? Well, it Ooh, looks like you had to come out this way. Yeah. I got a couple of little spots that I know are pretty decent. Um, <clears throat> that are nice little secret holes that not many people what? know about. So that's always, it's always nice. Hey, you know what? Ryan's always famous where he likes to hot spot. So we know that. Right. Yeah. You just, <laughs> just tell them right on the podcast, put them on right here. Let's, let's see where they are. <laughs> the guy that's famous for stirring the pot on the old Facebook pages. Yeah. <laughs> if, if people would just understand that 98% of that is just me being sarcastic. You know, oh, it's, yeah. oh yeah, we know uh, that. You, yeah. But people okay. don't know. They, they're like, ah, come back, right. little keyboard warriors. Uh, there, there was, there was, there was one even last night where it's, it's uh, uh, one of my buddies and, and the admin of Iowa Upland Hunting, uh, Uriah, and yep. he was just giving me a hard time. And some guys like, hey, you know, chill down, you two. And I was like, hey, we're, we're yeah. making these posts, but it's just because you know it's, it's friendly banter. It's, it's, uh, it, it's not really us being mean to each other. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard for people to read, sometimes read through that. There, there needs to be a sarcasm script. I don't know if that's sans or something that's a little, uh, oh, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wingdings or maybe, maybe yeah. put in a wingdings. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny. So what's been, what's been the, like the toughest part with Paco of getting, I mean, you've obviously killed it in 44 counties in four years. Four years. I mean, that's a super good number. Um, yeah. what's kind we'll of go three years this is the fourth years. year so, okay yeah. three years yes <laughs> yeah don't want to mess that part up right uh, right don't sell me short <laughs> <laughs> but what's been like your biggest battle that you feel getting those counties it, it's just it's it's public land i mean it, it's my goal is to on on public land i, I don't know if we said that when we we're talking yeah. about hunting all the counties it's on on public land and and now I'm to a point where I've got all the counties around me. Uh, you know, I'm driving, you know, two hours to places I've never seen, uh, just that I've only e-scouted. And I've had good luck, uh, but there has been times where I've driven out two hours and I have three spots marked. Uh, and, and all three of them have been hayed or, or not just huntable. Um, and, and that's the, that's really the only hard part. It's, it's, for what little land Iowa does have that's public, I mean, I'm sure you've had someone mention the what 
what number we are. I know we're in the 40s somewhere for for public land. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's it's just there's not a lot. But what we do have is is nicely managed. I would say a lot a lot of the county conservation boards, if you're really looking at uh, what they do, if they they do great with what they can. Yeah. Uh, same with the state. The state has some great land, and then the IHAP programs. Uh, a lot of the IHAPs are are good, but the, again, those those ones that I, I'm thinking of one county in particular where I drove out to three IHAPs, and I'm looking at them, and I was like, "Wow, these are the IHAPs." You know, there's. <laughs> yeah, I, I had I can, that happen I, to me yesterday. Yeah, I can hunt the ditch around the IHAP, I guess, yeah. if that's 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 the best hunting of it. But that that's really been the only challenge. Um, you know, I, I had the, uh, the luxury of, of meeting with Nick since we're both in the, the, the same area before. Yep. And I was, when we were talking about this, I was like, it's, 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 it's super easy to e-scout nowadays between, you know, the Iowa DNR has an amazing, uh, public land access or, uh, yep. Atlas. Um, and then, and then Onyx or any other of those things, like tell them when, when you're, you know, when you're sitting down to kill some time, instead of opening up cribbage or solitaire or whatever you do on your phone, you can open up Onyx, you know, look at land, look at the surrounding things and see what they were. Uh, you can tell if they're crops or timber and yeah. look at the contours and it's it, e-scouting is incredibly simple nowadays. Um, and that's why I've had mostly good luck uh, counties. I don't think I've, Besides the one county I'm thinking of, I can't think of to you know another area where I've driven and all my spots were duds. Yeah. You know, there'll be might might be one that just has a small little pocket, but uh, I do most of my hunting on weekdays, which is which is nice. Uh, and there, it's quiet and calm, and the birds are a little settled down, and and that's that's helped me a lot, I think, on this. Uh, oh this yeah, for sure. Goal yeah, we or went, endeavor. We went to a, a spot last weekend. And, you know, that was probably the nicest managed public land spot I have ever witnessed. And I felt like we were on private ground. It was, nice. it did, it yeah. was so well managed. Like, man, it was, like, it was just incredible. It was incredible. I would say when you come. Lots, everything. Yeah. Like. Yep. I'd say the hardest part when you come to, like, the east side of the state. So I'm over in Cedar Rapids. So, like, Cedar Rapids East is just the lack of upland habitat compared to like deer habitat for right. public ground i think that's probably going to be the biggest struggle when you try to mark off the counties on this side of the state is there's just more there's still like I, there's spots but there's a lot less spots and they're right. more it seems like they're more geared towards maybe deer and yep and, and some of the southern tiers are kind of like that too those yeah, spots are more to come up you definitely do not want to hunt public ground um, from the first weekend on to the third weekend in December. Yeah, in December. Yeah. We're shotgun hunting, and they're they're throwing slugs. Um, so, yeah, I would not. Uh, I would not <laughs> spit, spitting straight walls. I stay out of the uh, – I try to stay out of those areas when yes. straight walls are going everywhere. Oh, yeah. I had – I went out last year on a piece of public ground that it was – there was no timber on it no timber surrounding it. It's just all grass, just cornfields around it. And I had these deer hunters show up at like 10 o'clock and I'm, you know, out there with the dogs and there's probably four or five trucks that come out and they start barking at the dogs, like yelling shit out their windows. And I was like, man, fuck this. I'm, (laughs) I'm bouncing. Cause you know, my, my dogs are, they're kind of not the color of a coyote, but I mean, there's kind of the size of a coyote and these idiots are out here probably only hunt, you know, one weekend out of the year and out here barking at him and shit. And I'm like, oh, so piss. Just like the disrespect yeah. that they have, you know, I was got a kick out of those guys that just literally hunt one weekend a year. My cousin does that. And he always considers himself a big deer hunter. And I said, you think you're a big deer hunter because you hunt fucking two days out of the year? He literally hunts the weekend and he doesn't hunt anymore. That's it. That's all he ever hunts. <laughs> like, I don't know if I can consider you a hunter. <laughs> but, uh, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's pretty crazy. <clears throat> so so what, what's your favorite thing about Fitz? Since he's seven months, what did, what did he surprise you with? Um, if anything, I guess. And then, you know, what, what do you think is his best trait? 
being such a young dog. I mean, it, it, it surprised me, uh, his pointing right off the bat. I mean, when, when I had him out in training and he was like three months old and we started, you know, doing this train the trainer thing or, or around there wait, four months, what did I get him at 12 weeks? Anyway, as soon as I got him, I started taking him out. Uh, I, I'm really bad with weeks and months. Uh, I, I still have that problem with, with my newborn, you know, how old is she? And I'm like, uh, weeks, months, I'm trying to figure out. Uh, same with the dogs. I can, I can never do math on the fly. Uh, but anyways, when I had fits out, uh, the, the first day out, we had him in the field, he was locking up on point. Uh, and, and that, that's what surprised me. I mean, I, I've never had pointers myself growing up. Uh, my uncle did have a Weimaraner growing up. That was, you know, an amazing, uh, farm dog that, that hunted really well. Uh, but just, just his ability to point right away and swim. I mean, he, like you said, setters aren't known for swimming, but he, he started swimming right away. He started pointing right away. Uh, and, and everything has just kept growing from that. I mean, his point, he used to be able to hold a point for as long as he would. And I think that was kind of in that I I'm pointing, but I don't know why I'm pointing phase that he had. Uh, and we'd be able to go up there and like pick up his foot or, you know, touch him, and he'd still hold that point. Uh, now he'll, he'll hold a point. He's kind of, he, he breaks it towards the end. If we get close to him, uh, which, you know, is, is something that I'll, I'll have to figure out with, with the help of someone a lot more knowledgeable than me on woe training and, and so forth. But, uh, right now it's just getting him all these bird contacts. Uh, and, and I'm, 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 I, I can't be angry that he's pointing at the birds, but like I say, when, when we get close, he, he knows the bird is there and he wants that bird instead, but yep. he'll hold it till I get within five yards of them. Man, that's awesome. Just that natural ability to be able to do that. How yes. Many birds, how many birds have you missed this year? Then over here? How many birds have I missed over him? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the only bird I can think we missed over him was his first point on a rooster. <laughs> uh we were we were hunting oh that piss you off and and it was i mean it 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 happened maybe 10 yards from where we got paco's first bird uh you know six years ago uh and we were hunting up in north dakota because our north dakota trip is always before iowa opens we use our north dakota trip as like a, a primer to yep. get ready for iowa uh, but Fitz locked up and we're hunting these railroad tracks and, you know, they're built up, they're abandoned railroad tracks on our, on our family land. And it goes down or goes through our family land. But anyways, it goes down towards the river and he locked up on the bush. Uh, uh, my buddy's English setter came and backed him and we're walking up to this little piece of buck brush and the bird flushed straight down into the river. Uh, and the only person that had a shot would have been me, but I had the English setter back in it. And it's one of those shots that you only take if it's your dog you're shooting over yep. uh, because it was just way too close. So we, we just listened to the rooster cackle to the other side, uh, gave him an attaboy, put an onyx pin down as uh, first fits his first rooster point. Uh, and then, uh, and then complained about it the rest of the trip. <laughs> so, man, that'd be a tough one to say goodbye to. Uh, it, oh, a tear, a tear almost welled up. Speaking of on X, <clears throat> um, I got to see his on X map, but, uh, do you mark everything on there? Like you said, you just mark Fitz's first point on rooster. Is that the kind of things you're putting on on X is everything that, that happens like that? Cause like I said, we don't necessarily do that. We usually do it when we nope. see roosters or birds just in general whether it's public or private um just curious and like what your what your take is on on x and what you're doing with that so so that those are the only the only pins i have specific pins is i have you know fitz's first point paco's first rooster paco's first duck retrieve yep. uh other than that i just it's just if i find a piece of public uh, i'll put a pin down it's not necessarily where i flushed a bird or i'll, I'll put a pin down i have it you know, color coded, uh, you know, red, I've been there, red rooster, I've, I've got a rooster from it. And then a green or a teal color is uh, perspective spots that, hey, when I get to these counties, these are the spots that I'm kind of looking at. 
Yep. Uh, and I, and I, and I don't know how many pins are on my map. I mean, you, you <laughs> saw it, but yeah, <laughs> if you zoom out, I was just one multicolored red and, and teal. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's, there's hundreds of pins on there. Makes up, makes uh, my own X map look pretty sad. Yeah. And, and that's all it is. I mean, each, each spot that I plan on hunting or have hunted has its own pin. There's uh there's no multiple pins within that public piece. Uh, it's just, it's just a lot of pins. Makes for a hell of a database to keep a track, keep up with where you're at, all that good stuff. Yeah. I, I hope, uh, you know, I, I, have, I, I kind of mentioned, I went to law school. I'm an attorney here in town. I, I do family law I'm with cash at Warren family law here in, in the Metro. Uh, but I, I hope my Onyx, uh, I hope their encryption is better than my, my law firm's encryption, because that's how, that's how much I value these pins. Cause there, there are a lot. <laughs> well, and there's not personal information in there, so I'm sure it's probably not the best encryption. Yeah, <laughs> I know, but right. Uh, you can kind of, I can kind of hold it up here with our. Damn. Yeah. Uh, that is impressive. That is very incredible. impressive. It's pretty incredible. <clears throat> a lot of time, a lot of effort put in that. So when, we're, when Ryan's posting pictures of birds and stuff, he's definitely put in the time and effort. And yeah, I think that's the thing that's lost today too. You do see that a lot on these social media pages. Hey, can you guys help me out? Can you do this? You know. I don't, we don't have anybody help us out. We just right. drive, go and check it out and scout. Um, you know, I think that's part of hunting. And actually that's one, one of my favorite things to do. Like when we go to South Dakota, um, my favorite thing to do when we get there is like, all right, let's go scout and let's find some, some new ground, whether it's public or private and, you know, sit and watch the morning of and see if we see anything flying, see if we hear any roosters cackle, that type of thing. And I think that's, that's what's lost on, on hunters nowadays. And I'm not a, I'm not a anti, you know, share information with people, uh, you know, the, the, the anti hunting spot or hot spotting. Yeah. I, I, I don't like hot spotting on the yeah. internet. Uh, I will call someone out for that. Uh, <laughs> but I, I can tell you, I mean, I've, I've gotten a couple, you know, friendships from people that are like, Hey, I'm looking for pointers. Uh, and I'm like, well, Hey, you, you know, you either want to get together or Hey, try these spots. But if I know they're putting in the effort and we talk yeah. through it, like here's some spots. I mean, I even got a, a a gentleman last year that I met through the Iowa Upland hunting page, uh, maybe two years ago, but last year he's like, Hey, I'm having, uh, I'm, I'm going up to North Dakota. I'm having trouble finding birds. Um, you know, and, and just from following him on the pages, I knew that he was a guy that goes in and, and he looks for birds. He's just not, you know, asking for, for spots. And I gave him, I sent him all my Onyx pins to our family land. And I was like, Hey, you know, these, these aren't posted up there. Uh, you can go up there and hunt it. And if anyone says anything to you, just tell them, you know, Ryan said I could hunt it. Uh, so I, 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 I do think that, you know, as hunters, we need to share information and help each other out, but not by saying, Hey, I need help on, you yeah. know, give, give me a spot where 600, 800, you know, or in wild bird hunters, 25,000 people can see that information. Yeah. yeah. Got to work a little harder than that, even with today's, uh, today's thing, but <clears throat> that, that's where I get a lot of my things too. I'll, I'll see someone post, uh, post some photos on one of those groups and I'll screenshot it and then call it out for a, for hotspot. And I'll be like, Hey, oh man, that guy did great up here. I can see the sign in the background. I'll, I'll, I'll put this one in a pin just to, just to maybe get there later. <laughs> yeah. Some people aren't smart enough to not do that. Yeah. Well, that's why I don't understand. I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, it's taking away your spot too. Like, Hey, I, I had a great spot here at so-and-so, but you know, I'm going to post it. So now you have, even if, even if one tenth of the people or, or, you know, 5% of the people that see your post go out and try it. I yeah. mean, that's a lot of roosters gone. Oh yeah. We, we posted one on our page and it's a pretty noticeable public spot and there's not really any other public spots around this public spot or in that County. Somebody um, calls out. And he's from Pennsylvania and he knew where it was. <laughs> You know, like I'm trying to figure out where that stump was. I'm looking at all uh, Google Earth, and I'm like, "Hey, that's a nice <laughs> stump in your recent photo. I wonder where yeah. that's at." <laughs> you know, and it's like <laughs> when you when you go to that public spot, you'll be like, "Oh yeah, that is definitely where right. they were," because it's just like 
these massive fucking trees that were there that they cut down you know yeah. and that like my thing is why would you call it, it out in front of everybody why wouldn't you just write it and write us privately <laughs> yeah and i was like shh quiet man <laughs> but i mean the the thing is is with iowa there's there's some counties where there's literally one or two pieces of public ground right. and you could go there and get a few birds and you're going to post a picture and people are probably going to know because there's so little of that area that, you know, enough people have been there where if you get like you said, Southern or Western side of the state, there's enough public ground out there that when you post something or you can drive down the road and post in front of a barn or something and no one would ever find it, you know, <clears throat> but I don't know. It is, it gets tough when there's just not a shit ton of public ground around to keep all your spots hid. But is there even our best. public hunting in all 99 counties? That was my question. I didn't look to see if there was, but. Well, there, there, I mean, there is. is there? Uh, there, there's one county in Southwest. I mean, it's bottom tier. It's all the way over to the, to the West side of the state. And I, I think there's only one spot that's, you know, I think they've got three total public hunting spots in the whole county, and only <laughs> one is is grassland. So that that's that's one I might have to sit there and camp at for two days just yeah. to try to get a bird no uh, out of it. But you know, that's it, we got great farmland. I mean, that's that yeah. runs our economy. So I mean, what can you do? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. There is probably. I mean, I, I am worried about the northeast side too, but I'll I'll maybe uh pick pick some uh brains on that pick tyler's brain and yeah, and a, a lot spot. of these again I, I i i can i can think of a you know again a, a handful of people that that have messaged me and said hey when you come to my side or you know around my area of the state you know shoot me a message uh and i'll, I'll meet you out for some spots uh so we'll we'll see how that goes i got some favors yeah. to call in yeah. yep i got a decent spot that is next to my it's actually close to my grandpa's land in clayton county uh, that's public that I've been to a few times and seen birds there. Well, Nick was giving me all your pins uh, that that night. We that I, I, I met him. There. I don't got that pin because I know right <laughs> where it is. I don't I need, to, I don't need, need to pin that shit. Yeah, I know right where it's it is. Like, hey, hey, I'll buy you another beer if you give me another pin. <laughs> yeah. Is what we were doing. Like, oh, oh man, that drink was really stiff, man. Jeez, <laughs> thanks. Hey, how, about another, how about another three or four pins? Well, yeah. I thought you said one. Yeah, but I'll get you another beer. Yeah. I you three or four more. <laughs> uh, that's funny. So is it is this going to be, not to change subjects or anything, but is this going to be your first time running in NABDA? Yes. With a dog? Yeah, yeah. I, I've never done it before. Um, one, of the, one of the guys I talked to that I met through the group, uh, Iowa guy, uh, he's, he's a senior judge in NAVDA and He's kind of talked me into it versus, you know, uh, uh, Fitz's bloodline is all field trials and stuff like that. I, I think his uh, his mom just won another uh, another title. His I, I guess it'd be his uncle if we put you know human terms on things. Won a yeah. title, uh, so he he's great on that. But that's you know I I don't have a horse to go run that in the walking trials and stuff. It's it's really not how I hunt. Uh, so the NAVDA it, it, it kind of intrigued me and then it kind of goes back to that yeah i got a boykin because i want to be different uh I, I got this irish setter now and and there's you know never been a, a irish setter uh ut champion and in, in that or a you know uh champion in, in navda for an irish setter. there's been a red setter but not an irish um so it, it's just something different that I, I could take pride in being like hey my dog's different yeah. uh it, it's not just another you know short hair no offense to the short hair people no no do you uh so what <laughs> do you what do you got what do you got to do to prepare i mean since you've never done it what uh, are you the, doing? the advice i got for the first year is just hunt them yeah. i mean just get them on the contact uh you know there's the and and i'm gonna go back to my mistake there's never been a vc a versatile champion there's been ut irish setters but in my uh my flustered speaking here you guys will never know that i talk for a living i mean i'm, I'm not as uh, silver-tongued here as nick 
uh selling things well, well nick's uh, is silver fox all around i mean look at yeah him. silver fox silver tongue <laughs> yeah i mean goes hand in hand right yeah there, there's never been a, a a vc is what i meant to say uh irish setter uh and and I'll, I'll, i'm not gonna kid myself and say yeah i'm gonna get my dog there but uh you know we're gonna give it the old college try on training so what's uh, uh sorry what's the so the versatile what's the difference between that and the upland for the NABTA, the versatile champion, I'm guessing it's waterfowl and upland. Yeah, the, the versatile is just like the, the ultimate, you know, the the, the top prize. The, there's a utility, and then if you get your utility, you can do the, go to you try to get the versatile. Um, and there and and again, there's there's been no Irish that have done that, but uh, I, I've been talking to this guy, uh, the, the senior judge, and he's been giving me tips going back to what am I doing to prepare, and it's just. I'm going to hunt them and then I'm going to, then I'm going to start training for it in the summer and, and start with the natural ability test. Uh, I think it's in March that the, uh, the heartland Traptor will do and, and go from there. I mean, if he's horrible at it, you know, at least he's a good hunter so far. Yeah, so, for sure. It's just one of those things. So it, I, I can't imagine, uh, the, the way NAV does set up that you can have a, a good hunting dog. That's not also, you know, at least semi-decent at NAVDA. Yep. So we'll see. I've, I've never, never been into testing. Like I said earlier, I'm a, I'm a pot hunter. Uh, it, it didn't need to be pretty as, as long as I got the bird. Uh, and this is just kind of something I'm, I'm trying to do to, you know, one showcase, you know, Kelly's breeds or Kelly's dogs uh, that, that what they can do, because I mean, this, this dog is, is, I think he's going to be pretty good. Um, I don't know why I'm looking for him. I know he's not here. I was wondering, I'm like, is he down there? You should yeah, I was like, where, where is he? I'm looking for him. Looking and at the ground. Uh, How small know, is he? Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Paco's over here. He's just laying there looking at me. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll, I don't know where we're going with that, but yeah. So it's, I got, so I got, the, I got, I got lost when I was looking for the dog that's not here. <laughs> so the first test is just natural ability. So what does that in, entail for NABDA? Uh, it, it's just, uh, the, the, the willingness to, you know, and I don't, I, NAFTA people are going to kill me when I, when I talk, you know, about stuff I don't know. Uh, but it's the, the main things that they're looking for, from my understanding is, you know, just, you know, can you, can they point the, you know, their, their willingness to hunt, their obedience, their tracking, uh, their willingness to get into water. Uh, you know, they don't have to do a full water to retrieve. They just need to get in there. Uh, but he was, again, I'm pointing to a dog that's not there. He was swimming uh, as soon as I got him. So I, I don't nice. think those are going to be the issue. Uh, maybe tracking because he, he, you know, he runs with his head really high uh, as opposed to like Paco. He runs with his nose straight on the ground almost. He's looking for ground scent. Um, and, and Fitz is running with his head high looking for air scent. So we'll see if he has the ability to track birds. But uh, NAVDA, it's, it's something I know very little about, but I'm, I'm interested into getting involved and learning in it. Yeah, for sure. So Ooh, they... I, uh, I did, uh, I got a title on diesel through HRC hunting retriever club. And I mean, when I had him trained, they obviously got me into it and, uh, I got addicted real quick, especially when they compete and you know, you you win your first one. You're like, Oh, that just worked. Oh, now I want, want another one? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm going to sign up for another one. You know, and each one you sign up for, I think it's a, it's a hundred bucks a competition. So you can pay 200 for a weekend, if I remember. So we did this when he was, so he's seven. So we did this five years ago. I can't remember all the yeah. thoughts. You, you don't need those 529s. Just keep doing those. Uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> just keep doing those dog competitions. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so we, uh, it was good and it's addicting and I would do it again in a heartbeat, but I mean, it got real pricey and, uh, the wife was all right, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> so does, does NAVDA, so like HRC, you have to do like four passes to get that title. Does NAVDA, is, is it just one and one pass and you're. Yeah, that's, that's it? my understanding. Again, nice. you're going to get some, some NAVDA comments. And when you post this about <laughs> Uh, this guy knows nothing about it, and I'll openly admit I, I know nothing about it yeah. other than obviously I, I don't either. I know I'm going to start running my dog in it. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then I'll learn from there. 
Yeah, no, that'll be really good. So what's uh, what's your goals for the rest of pheasant season or any trips coming up as well? Uh, well, goal is to knock at least, I mean, my goal is always about 10 counties a year, uh, you know, just to stay on that pace. If you think about it, if you do 10 counties a year, it's still a almost a 10 year plan to do all 99 counties and your your dog's hunting lifespan is is what maybe 10 if you're lucky yeah Yeah, so and and we started late uh so it it's hopefully maybe knock off 10 counties uh you know get out a little bit more i've been i've been getting out a lot but it's just been you know an hour and a half here hour there uh i was able i had a court hearing in northwest iowa not too long ago where it was just a half day hearing. Uh, so I brought uh, Paco and, you know, my shotgun and my boots and, and everything. And after the court hearing ended, I, I drove to a piece of public and, and hunted it uh, with the goal of like, hey, I'm going to hunt this one spot. Uh, but I, I just can't, I was going to hunt this one county I've already hunted. And then I was going to maybe go try these other pieces. Uh, I shot a limit in the, the first hour that I walked it. And I was like, man, I got to stop doing that <laughs> Like on, on some of these trips. That's, that's like the second time I've done it where I was like, I got these, all these pins to do kind of a circle and come home. Uh, and then I just can't resist good, you know, shooting a bird over good dog work. Yep. Um, yep. So that, that'll be it, you know, just try to hunt as many as we can in, in Iowa. And then I think in January, I'm going to head down to New Mexico uh, oh. and, and try to quail hunt down there. Oh, that'd be fun after after pheasant season and uh been talking to to our buddy tyler uh to try to try to meet up with him and uh at least look at his his kelly's dog and compare it to my kelly's dog so you'll take fits with you and yep so so fits i do have the the plan of doing a north american grand slam with him on What's all the different of? birds there's really no set thing because of uh you know there's some birds in mexico where there's like uh the himalayan you know one that that people really don't hunt with dogs uh but it's it's hunt as many north american upland species of upland birds and you know he's got pheasant over him now over point is what i'm going for with him uh maybe get bob white here and then go shoot some different quail down there Mm -hmm. uh but got a lot of lot of trips planned with him i think this 2022 we'll do new mexico uh then we'll go back to north dakota we did not get any uh sharp tails over him or any huns we just i mean we didn't shoot any of those on our trip uh uh chris the boykin guy you had on earlier missed uh, missed a perfectly flushed sharp tail right in front mm-hmm. of him that i've never seen a sharp tail get up that close to anyone in my life well, that's uh, well, I mean, he, it got up and, and, you know, my, my buddy Uriah and I were, were, were down on one end of the field and, and, uh, you know, Pat and Chris are on this other side of the field and they're, they're pushing it and Sharptail gets up at, at Chris's boot and it, it just flies away. And we're like, why, why, what's wrong? And look at that sharp tail go like why didn't they shoot like i mean his his uh traveler that the traveling boykin there he he did great dog work we watched him get all birdie and flush that and we're like man that, i i don't think i'll ever see a sharp tail on on flat north dakota prairie that you could catch with your bare hands uh yeah but he just flew right by so we didn't get any any sharp tails there i mean we shot, saw a ton of sharp tails up in north dakota this year just didn't get them but none of that so we got new mexico in 2022 we'll do wyoming i think we're gonna go try to get uh, a sage grouse uh nice. out there and, and see what other bonus birds we can shoot um 2023 we got oregon planned and then a, a nebraska hunt and then again we always got our yearly north dakota trip either once or twice we usually try to get up there twice um but it'll what just you, depend on these other trips what are you going for out in oregon uh just everything yeah uh yeah we'll get some some maybe california quail down there in the the you know was that the western side the northwest side um, I got some family up up in the northeast side that will go hunt, but 
just we'll start we'll just start seeing what we can cross off the list between all the different grouse species and and upland species and yeah uh, just keep going do you uh when you take these trips do you i think i saw a picture you make do you take a camper to camp in when you do these or are you staying airbnbs or what's your uh yeah the, so the camper was new this for the past two years we started doing the, the north dakota trip yeah uh yeah we used to stay with my grandparents but they're getting they're getting older my grandpa just had his 90th birthday so we used to have the you know our grandma would we'd stay with my grandparents we'd get the the full five-star treatment you know we'd get some good uh (laughs) yep some good german cooked meals some you know and uh all that stuff but you know with we we just stopped trying to make a, a a big mess for them uh, you know, with all the dirt that we'd bring in and stinky dogs and all that. Yeah. So, uh, we, we started staying in a camper at my, uh, cousin's farmstead, uh, which, is, which is a lot nicer. Cause you know, one, one guys can be the guys. Uh, but you know, both, both, uh, both trips that we've done in the past, uh, we park in the shed, but if you walk or we park in front of the shed, but you walk around the shed, like you, you shoot birds. So oh, nice. you, you can sit out there and eat, you know, we're sitting in the camper, uh, eating our food and we see the birds running, you know, out in front of us and we're like, <laughs> well, Hey, might as well grab your shotgun or, yeah. or, uh, we were cleaning birds this year and it happened. Fritz is, uh, one of Fitz's, you know, one of those, I'm, I'm proud of my dog moments is we're cleaning birds on a tailgate and we see, see two roosters fall or fly into the, uh, fly into the slough behind us. And we grab the experienced dogs. And, and we try to chase them down and we can't find them. Uh, and then I take Fitz back and I'm like, ah, I'm just going to go give you know, one more try with Fitz because I, I hate losing and I, I hate letting the roosters win. <laughs> I was like, I'll give it one more try. And he gets on a path and he starts, you know, going back and forth and the cattails weaving back and forth. Uh, and he follows it 200 yards. He's chasing it in the opposite way that the other, that the, that the experienced dogs went. Uh, and we ended up flushing a bird at the end. It wasn't over his point because he did one of those, like, I'm, I'm, I'm about to point, but mm-hmm. yep. the bird got up uh, and and I was able to get it. And I have the tail feathers for that one, uh, but it, I, I won't consider it his first over point bird because it was it was a dirty, it was a dirty bird. It wasn't one of those <laughs> fancy, like, you know, I got the setter for the the high tail and the, and the, and the frills. Uh, but he tracked that a long ways and that's, again, he was six months and he's running in there in, in swampy, you know, some spots he was going up to his ankles and in, in muck nice. uh, and he was still able to chase it down. That's awesome. But that, that, that camper works nice. I mean, after a week of hunting with four guys, like we had this year, it gets a little smelly in there, uh, <laughs> but it, it, it makes for a fun trip. Yeah, that would be pretty fun. It'd be a good way to do it. So before we, head out for the night what's one of your favorite stories you gave us i think you just gave us a good one of of fits what's a good one with paco one of your favorites oh so i would there's two paco yeah. uh you know i i one of the trips we hunted we we shot a bird into a, a slough and the cattails were just so thick we couldn't get through them and this is where paco gets gets his nickname uh and and you know, we, we tried to get the big, we had a, a, a Chesky Fusick with us and we tried to send him through the cattails, but it was just, you know, he couldn't get through the short hair, couldn't get through. Uh, and we're like, well, all right, let's, let's try to, you know, think of a way we can get through these really thick cattails to get this rooster floating in the middle of this water. So it's like, Hey, let's walk up to this, this road that runs, you know, next to it. That's a little elevated. So, you know, the road doesn't wash out. And we, I hold Paco up in the air because Paco wasn't around when the bird went down. He had no idea where this, this bird, you know, he just heard a shot, got excited, didn't see it fall or anything. So I get up on top of the road. I hold Paco up and I'm holding him up in the air and a buddy throws a rock in there. And Paco sees the, you know, the splash and gets all, you know, starts whining, put him down. He takes off. And, and we can't see him or anything because the cattails are so thick. And then all of a sudden we hear a you know, we, he found the water somehow. Uh, and he goes out there and he, we see him grab the rooster and he's coming back and we're like, Oh, there's no way he's going to be able to make it back with that rooster too. It's just way too thick. But, uh, we gave him some time and, and out popped Paco 
Uh, and that's why we call him the, we call him the salty muskrat because he never <laughs> takes a picture he looks happy in. Uh, so he always looks a little salty. And then we call him the muskrat because he just he must have found a muskrat trail or, or something. And he got through those cattails. And, and that's I think that was a <laughs> awesome. s- second year hunting, maybe. And, um, you know, I, I, I sent him off to training when when I went on for our for our honeymoon, I sent him to get gun broker stuff. Uh, but other than that, all his training is just going out there and running birds and, and shooting. Mm-hmm. So um, that it's either that or a couple of years ago that that river or stream, as as Chris liked to talk about it, 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 it you know, we were hunting up next to that on our farm or, or cousin's farm, st- cousin's farm land. Uh, and, and we we're talking to a bird dog went on point and it's facing towards the river and the river's flooded the highest I've seen it in you know 10 15 years and I tell my buddy like hey if this bird gets up shoot once because if if you miss and you have to shoot twice it's going to land in the river and it's going way too fast to send you know a dog into uh so the dog goes on point it had a beeper collar on that went to that you know annoying hawk scream yep and and Paco knows that that hey some other dog is on point I'm going to come in for a glory flush so as soon as he hears that scream he just comes charging from wherever he is across the field and will just superman right at the end of that dog's nose uh so he does that bird gets up the guy misses the first shot takes the second shot drops it in the middle of the you know the the river that's just raging uh and the problem was that the river was so high that it was into all these trees. So there's trees, there's down trees. Uh, I try to call off Paco, but he goes, you know, tried to go straight in, saw that there was a bunch of down trees, runs down the bank a little bit and goes in and just timed it perfectly with the bird going down the water, uh, him swimming out and hit it perfectly and brought it back. Uh, I think if he would have missed the bird, I don't think he would have ever been able to catch up to it with how fast the water was going. Um, and he, he, I did give him a beep to try to give him a a little Nick to try to get him to come back. So he wouldn't go for that retrieve. Uh, but he was like, no, I'm not listening. (laughs) Like, no, I saw that bird go down. I'm getting that bird, you know, I'm, I'm I'm getting in there. So I was, yeah, I was like, I I was, I was ready to go swimming if I had to, to, you know, grab him. But man, he, he went in and came and came out perfectly. And it was (laughs) like, man, good job. Don't do that again. It's kind of like, you know, when I, when I played basketball and I would take a three pointer and the judge would be like, Hey, don't, or the court or the, the judge, the, the coach would be like, Hey, don't take that. Oh, good shot. Good shot. You know, <laughs> it was one of those moments like, Hey, don't do that. Okay. okay that wasn't that bad. <laughs> you know, so uh, he's got a, got a couple of good retrieves in there for a, uh, for a little tiny. I mean, he's 40 pounds, little tiny dog, but that's awesome. It's all in the heart. It's all in the heart. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I don't know if it's heart or, I don't know if he, he loves to hunt or if he hates birds, but it's, it's one of those. I'm thinking it's more, he hates the birds. Uh, uh, and it's, it's not a heart that he's going for. It's that, you know, just that killer. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I want you guys all gone. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Ryan, we definitely appreciate you coming on talking about your yeah. two dogs, given the input of what you do know about NAVDA. Obviously we don't know anything. <laughs> Yeah, don't thank me for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> we uh, definitely look forward to seeing Fitz out in the field, uh, watching him work. And hey, we got to grab uh, some more beer and uh, grab a hunt together. And Nick will give you more pins. The more beer you give him. <laughs> yeah, that's, I guess that's one of the 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 pros of being in the metro, or that one of the the pluses, right? I mean, yeah. yep, yeah. If I make my way out there, I'll be, we'll be sure to grab beer sometime. Yeah, but we'll do it. Not gonna argue with that. Awesome. Thanks, sir. Appreciate awesome. it very much. Have a great Talk night. See you later.